So far, a spectacular start to this day. Uh, cool temperatures, finally. And Detroit, the famous city of Detroit in my uh, future, really soon. I can't wait. It's gonna get interesting coming into it. Last night's weather has made for a spectacular morning with cooler than usual temperatures. I welcome this change as I continue my way north to the city of Detroit where I'll be spending two nights. The plan is to ride around the city taking a look at some of its historical buildings, spending time at Belle Isle Park, and lastly going to watch a Detroit Tigers baseball game. But first are these 37 miles today to get to Detroit passing through the cities of Trenton and Ecores on historic West Jefferson Avenue through the heavily industrialized Carbon Works neighborhood and finally reaching Detroit's scenic river walk with the help of a fellow cyclist I met along the way. Once in Trenton, I passed by the Trenton Channel Power Plant. It was built in 1924 as a coal-burning power station, but is soon to be decommissioned by 2022 to make room for cleaner burning natural gas and renewable energy plants. This power plant shares the southern portion of Slocum's Island with Elizabeth Park. I get on the park's bike path and take a look around before getting onto West Jefferson Avenue. West Jefferson Avenue Southern end made for quite the jarring ride. The shoulder was rampant with potholes and cracks in the pavement. The semi-patch road went like this for several miles making it a painful and slow process but I eventually find a sidewalk and soon after a smooth West Jefferson Avenue with a very nice bike lane. That's some serious driving there, holy smokes. How he made that turn that tight, that's like a very, very good measuring with the eyeball. Two eyeballs. You can only go so fast, the roads are really bad. <laughs> that was insane like a couple of miles of absolutely I don't know how they can continue to patch the road I'm rattled 
from the road to the sidewalk. I think the road here is already uh, way better. The ups and downs of bicycle touring. One minute you're getting rattled, the next minute is like you're surfing down a wave. I enjoy the smooth ride and stop to launch the drone and take some footage of US Steel's Great Lakes Works steel making and finishing plant. Its iron making furnaces are located on Zug Island just north of the steel making facility you see here in the city of Ecors. This impressive plant has an annual capacity of producing close to 4 million net tons of steel. I'm on a Jefferson Avenue about 7 miles from downtown and it's such a wide avenue and there's hardly any cars here. This, all the buildings are abandoned for the most part. And the avenue is wide, like where there must have been insane traffic here at one point. As soon as I ride over the Rouge River on West Jefferson Avenue's Rouge River Bridge, I ran into heavy industrial truck and traffic, more abandoned buildings, and Steve a fellow cyclist who offered to show me a back roads way to Detroit's downtown and its river walk. With uh, Steve, this fellow cyclist, he's British, and uh, he's been touring around the U.S. But ended up here in uh, West Detroit, and uh, he was an engineer for many years. And he's like telling me there's a shortcut, which is right here. So I'm kind of taking advantage of local knowledge here with uh, this man. Anyways, this is Steve right here. He just, uh, I was talking to a security guard there on uh, Jefferson Ave and he's been uh, filling me in on some of the Detroit history and just uh, showing me around a little bit. I guess you know your way around. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. This bridge here is privately owned uh, by the Maroon family and uh, had a monopoly. As I understand it, this is the busiest crossing, international crossing between the US and certainly Canada. Really? So these guys had basically had a monopoly on that, uh, on that crossing. The Ambassador Bridge connects Detroit to Windsor, Ontario, Canada. It's the busiest U.S.-Canadian crossing carrying over 25% of traded goods between the two countries. But soon it'll be joined by the currently being built Gordie Howe International Bridge. He's saying it's closed. We just got yelled at a, by a security guard saying that the road's closed and not to go this way. And uh, I turned around and the guy took off, so 
I asked him and he's like, ah, let's just go. Just got back from, I just cycled from Michigan to uh, Seattle. Um, 30, 3,100 miles, got back. Um, well, almost exactly two weeks ago. Really? Just two weeks ago? Yeah. Yeah. Did yeah. you enjoy it a lot? It was amazing. Um, it, it was pretty brutal weather. It was a pretty brutal summer to be touring out west, I tell you that. It was, it was hot. A lot of 100 degree days, a lot of smoke. Steve's gonna give me some tips on how to get through Michigan. My original plan was to go to the Iron Bell and he's giving me some other ideas and he seems to be pretty adequate about it so I'm gonna listen to what he has to say and uh, rearrange my uh, plans I think. make it to the five and a half mile long Detroit International River Walk where he starts naming the impressive buildings along its southern end. First he points out this convention center, Huntington Place, one of the largest of its kind in the United States. We ride past the 222 foot Detroit Princess and along the General Motors Global Headquarters called the Renaissance Center with its impressive group of seven connected skyscrapers. As soon as we get to the William Milliken State Park, Steve and I find a bench where he shares with me his experience riding west through Michigan and its upper peninsula before saying goodbye. Steve was really cool. I've, I've had a hard time keeping up with the guy. The guy pedals like way fast. Right now I uh, need to find a place to stay in the city that's affordable and a half. And get some rest, get some food. I'm starving, I only had breakfast this morning. I'm in downtown Detroit in a hotel room. It's kind of like a motel. It's really small and affordable, I would say, for city prices. And it's giving me a, the chance to go record a lot of these historic buildings in the downtown area. And I want to go to a museum or two and, uh, and uh, Belle Isle is uh, what it's called. I really want to do that. And I'm working on my bike because the front end, the, the squeaking on my replacement brakes that I had spares for is terrible and I have new ones so I'm gonna put the new brakes on there and I'm washing my bike I got really dirty yesterday I want to have it clean when I ride around the city I'm gonna do a tour of uh, Detroit, check out all the older buildings. I know there's a lot of old buildings here that are uh, historical. By way of Cass Avenue, I first stopped to take a look at Detroit's 1926 Masonic Temple, the world's largest of its kind. 
Its neo-gothic architectural design is quite striking and what's inside is as well. It has three theaters, ballrooms and banquet halls plus everything from a swimming pool, bowling alley, a pool hall and much more. I get back to Cass Avenue and keep riding northwest towards New Center, one of Detroit's business districts. On the way I pass Wayne State University and it's lively seen with students strolling about. This university's main building was built in 1895 with its Romanesque revival architectural design and it was used as Detroit's central high school until 1926 before becoming the academic building for the university. Before long I'm in New Center and checking out Cadillac Place, one of Michigan's National Historical Landmarks. This 1922 building was built as the General Motors headquarters and it was such until 2001 when the last of GM's employees were moved to the Renaissance Center. In 1923 it was the second largest office building in the world. Across from Cadillac Place on West Grand Boulevard is the Fisher Building, another of Michigan's National Historic Landmarks. This 1928 Art Deco design skyscraper is home to the 2089 seat Fisher Theater and serves as the headquarters for Detroit's public schools. After looking around New Center, I get back on Cass Avenue and head back towards the downtown area. I'm now looking to ride to Belle Isle Park which is 8 miles away. Riding on Cass Avenue was a lot of fun. There was lots to see and had great energy with students of Wayne State University doing their thing. Midtown behind and reach the western downtown area where I pass this triangular castle called the Grand Army of the Republic Building. It was built in 1901 for veterans of the Civil War and is now home to a restaurant and a production company. Ahead to my left is another of Detroit's 10 National Historic Landmarks, the Guardian Building, also known as the Cathedral of Finance. It was built in 1929 with its unique representation of Art Deco architecture, and is now owned by Wayne County, Michigan and serves as its headquarters. Next is the Renaissance Center, a concept thought of by Henry Ford II as an attempt to revitalize Detroit's economy in the 1970s. It opened in 1977, becoming one of the most recognized of Detroit's skyline buildings. Known as the Rensen, it is now owned by General Motors serving as its headquarters with a central tower being a Marriott Hotel. I'm heading to uh, Belle Isle. It's about a couple mile ride. That was pretty fun going through the downtown area as much as I could do. I had a lot of fun to ride in the city like that. Not a lot of traffic at all. I asked a couple of people and both times they told me it was because of COVID. 
To get to Bel Isle Park, I ride past Detroit's downtown and head northeast on East Jefferson Avenue until reaching East Grand Boulevard, where I take a right turn and cross over the MacArthur Bridge and ride into the park. recognized from me watching a uh, formula one racing and indy car racing this uh fountain i'm gonna come to right now i ride around the james scott memorial fountain take a look at detroit cityscape from the island and detroit river shipping action and start riding the six mile long trail loop around the park on the way i noticed the park's aquarium its conservatory and nature center Hey guys. Went all the way around uh, Belle Isle. It's huge for residents of the city of Detroit to be able to come out here and just enjoy this gorgeous park. It really is just outstanding. Beautiful water views and landscapes and picnic tables and there's all kinds of people doing all kinds of recreational activities. So out of all, changing it from the city to the park scene. And now, hello guys. Hey. How you doing? And uh, now I'm going to go to downtown again. It's another three miles to get there. And go to a Detroit Tigers game. I can't wait. It's going to be such a change of pace for me to sit and watch other people race around. All right. Finish it up. You gotta be so careful riding in Detroit. I mean, there's giant holes. If you don't see them and you land your front wheel in them, you're flying off the bike. It's a, you gotta be really careful. Even on the bike designated lanes in the avenues like this one, you gotta be watching ahead for sure. And every which way. What an awesome day I had. Deciding to spend the day in Detroit was a total success. I've now visited several American cities with my bicycle and I am sold on the idea. It is so much fun to cover ground all over with friendly bike access and never having to worry about parking. I will never take for granted the ability that traveling by bicycle offers me by allowing me to visit so many different types of places. I can go from a city like Detroit one day and a secluded rail trail or even a national park the other.